Uh, my name is Rob Bruley. Um, I own Curva Coaching New York. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Curva, um, it's a worldwide coaching organization. It's been around since 1984. It's in every federation in the world. Um, I'm very fortunate. I've been involved with Curva for 25 years, working out in Europe, um, out in Japan, and for the last 22 years over here. Uh, it's developed over the years into, it's unrecognizable to what it used to be um, when we first started. Uh, last year in the, in the Men's World Cup, 11 of the, sorry, 8 of the 11 of the Japanese team that represented Japan came from the Curva Academy out in Japan. They have huge academies. It's, it's, it's endorsed by their soccer federation. The whole of the women's team that played in the World Cup that got beat by the USA, every girl came through the Curva Academy. Um, you're going to see now, you're all, you know, you're all coaches, you're all involved in the game. The game has changed so much now. It's become more technical than it's ever been. You know, the days of getting it and lumping it are gone. It's all technical. And right from the grassroots, right up to, if you want, the English Premier League, which is regarded as the top league in the world, it's all about first touch. It's all about controlling the ball. It's all about moving it quickly, passing, receiving. But all this stuff has to be taught at a young age through repetition and, and just doing the basics. Um, I'm very fortunate. We got Capital United here. Um, I didn't realize how many of them were going to turn up, <laughs> a lot more than I realized, but, which is good. Now, I've been with this club for 22 years. Um, people think I own Capital United. I'm nothing to do with Capital United. I just come in and train them every week. I'm very fortunate. If you've ever played against any Capital United teams, the girls are very comfortable on the ball, extremely comfortable. Technically, all these, all these girls have been with me probably since they were eight years old. You know, um, and uh, this year, for those of you that follow the high school up here, you've got Brooke Pickett, who's from Stillwater. She's a Curva kid. She's All-American. Stillwater won the state championship. Four of those girls play on Capital United. So it's no mistake you're seeing, you know, your high school teams that are, are, have got a lot of the... the the Curva trained kids are, are now coming to the forefront. This is our biggest area that we work with up here. George works with us as well uh, out of Clifton Park. But we're working with every club, you know, major club in the capital district now from Alley Cats. We've probably got about the best part of 12 clubs that we work with. We're club neutral. We do not, I don't, I don't train teams. I never take these girls to a game or anything like that. I just train them. So right from the Alley Cats, FC Dutchman, Rotterdam, Capital United, I'm sure I'm going to miss some out. Hoosick Falls last year, we, we're doing some work there. Waterford this year, we're doing work there. Where we just come in and do weekly sessions with them. And again, I, I, I'm trying to get the coaches more involved. I want to do more professional development with, with the coaching staff. So our sessions, we encourage the coaches to come in and jump on board and, and uh, pick our brains and, and copy the sessions. When we're not there, pick it up. Um, better people than me put this stuff together and it, it works. The kids love it. Some of the stuff that I'm going to show you here, look, I'll, I'll try to do something a little bit different to what I've done over the last two or three years. Um, some of it's a little bit new. There's a whole new curriculum. We're always churning out new curriculums, new ways of coaching the kids. But at the end of the day, you're still doing the basic stuff. You're still ball feeling, ball mastery. If you look at our pyramid of player de development, the biggest block at the bottom is ball mastery. Soccer, I think, is one of the worst games to play if you can't control the ball. It's a horrible game to play. Kids get frustrated, team gets frustrated, you get frustrated. So all of our sessions, whether I'm working with um, the little tiny little Mighty Mike Tots or high school, college, I do a lot of work with college kids. And I was very fortunate in England to work with the uh, English Premier League uh, with the academy boys who are trying to make it in the pros. They're all doing this kind of stuff. You know, a lot of it they will do as a warm-up. So some of the stuff here, I'll show you some little bits and pieces you can do as a warm-up. You know, you see your teams, and, and these girls do it as well. They turn up, they put the goalkeeper in goal, and they smash 40 balls past the. You know, they're all in those long lines of 20. They touch the ball once. I'm trying, when these kids turn up for practice, they're doing all little ball stuff. Some of the stuff I can show you. This year, we had a major breakthrough. I was talking to George about it earlier, and, and, and he played against the. We got a little six-year-old that's turned up. She's never played before in her life. She's about this big. She's playing on the U10 team. I've never seen a kid like this. 
this little kid called Harper. If ever you come up against her, like, don't take her lightly because she is the real deal. I've never, in, I've been coaching and playing, you know, the best part of 50 years. I've never seen a kid like this. And uh, George and I were talking about her as well. She gets bounced around a little bit, but her natural God-given talent is out of this world. And I hope that she sticks with it and doesn't get burnt out. But again, you know, she's involved with our U10 team. So some of the stuff that you can do with your kids while you're setting up preps. So just spread out a little bit. Again, everything we do is one ball, one kid. Very little lines, keep them moving. You've got one hour, one hour to, like most of you, to try and affect the way they play over the course of a period. It's never going to work in an hour. You know, you're never going to produce the next Messi in one hour. But over a course of a body of work, over a semester, you'll be surprised how kids transform and change um, when they're touching the ball, repetition, loads of stuff. So just spread out a little bit. I know I put cones down, but spread out a little bit. Some stuff you can do is when they're warming up. So as all you do, just get the ball moving there, and every three or four, just push it out, stop it, take a touch with the opposite foot. So there, push it out, stop it, take a touch with the opposite foot. Go. So, so they would do this while I'm setting up. Instead of them smacking the ball in the back of the net, and, and doing other stuff, sitting there talking and whatever. Just get them doing stuff like this. Just get them moving around a little bit. I'm going to rush through a lot of this stuff because this I didn't plan to do this, but I thought I'd just show you some of the stuff. All right, the other thing we can do, so there's one little thing. Again, just get them moving. So here, we're just doing one, two, three, four, big soul roll and stop it. And a big soul roll across and stop it. So going along the line, go. A lot of the stuff that you'll see me do if I've worked with your clubs or you've seen me out and about, I like to do a lot of multitasking. I like to do loads and loads of different stuff with the ball and keep them moving. Right, so that's that. So this time here, they're just going to... And you're slowly building this up. And here you're just doing this. So you, we call this foundation. A little soul roll, a little step over, and a little turn. So this time they're just doing that. They're doing a soul roll, they're doing a step over and they're doing a turn. Go. In your own time, step over and turn. So here you're bringing into, getting them used to doing some little change of directions. For me, I teach change of direction all the time. I think it's one of the most important skill sets that you should be teaching your kids. Because whether you're a defender, midfielder or attacker, you're always changing direction on a field. So incorporate that in as many practices as you can. All right, and you could just get the ball moving. As all you're doing here is pull, put, you just there, every now and then pull and push. So we're just doing little side to sides. We're going to pull it and we're going to push it. Go. It's just a little pull push. I did a session in the week with some college kids and they struggled with this. I thought, what have your coaches been teaching you? They struggle to do some of this stuff. They were all over the place. And again, hold it there, Court gives ball. So I like to illustrate to the kids, where could you use that in a game? So something as simple as this, Court, come and get the ball. So she gets the ball and we just pull it and we push it away. So if you can illustrate where this stuff comes into a game, the kids buy into it more, rather than just doing stuff for the sake of doing it. Try and illustrate where could you use it. Ask them, where would you use that in a game? And something as simple as that. Last little one. Again, I've, we've got hundreds of these that we do. So as all you're doing, get, find a little bit of space. As all you're doing is that, that, and that. So you just make a little triangle. Again, it's good little foot skills, warm-up, flexibility. So just make a little triangle around your standing foot. Again, it's tough on the gym floors. I know some of you work on gym floors. It's tough. The ball's rolling away all the time. We get spoiled with these great indoor surfaces and the great turf fields. <laughs> all right, then putting that into a move. So all we're going to do is dribble around, we dribble around, we pull it back, we make a move and we change direction. So just dribble around, just dribble around. When you hear the whistle, just do the move.
All right. So I went off. What I've done, I've printed out a booklet because I know what it's like. I've been to coaching sessions, and you're trying to write it down while you're watching. So I've put all this down. I haven't put this down. I went off the reservation a little bit with this. But this gives you an idea. Look at all the amount of touches they've had. And a lot of these kids will turn up on a Sunday when I coach them. So they're there 15 minutes before the session, and you see them doing all this on their own. The more they can do on their own before they come to you is a bonus. Again, you have them for one hour. All right, what we do here, so getting into our session. As I say, the biggest part of the pyramid of player development for Curver is ball mastery. There's, there's only so many ways you can touch the ball. So what, what they've done at Curver is they've identified there's probably about 30 different skill sets. And probably, you know, we, we, um, we put them into very, very different drills. But you're basically doing the same thing. What you've got to try and do as a coach, so it doesn't go stale. If you've got your kids for like 20, 30 weeks, I have some teams for 20 or 30 weeks, it can go stale. So you've got to brainwash them into thinking they're doing something different by putting it into a different pattern. That's all we do. So a lot of this stuff, you've probably seen me do this before, but not in this format. And they don't realize that. They think they're doing something different. They're not. They're doing the same thing. They're touching the ball with the same parts of the foot. And again, over a course of four or five weeks, just keep rotating it. You know, keep, keep it fresh for them. So we start off here. The other thing I'm really big on is color coordinating the cones. Because if, you tell, if you're working with a new team, like I do sometimes, and you, you, know, you say, go to the blue cone, well, they end up over there, they're over there, they're all over the place. So try, and it makes your life a lot easier. Try and color coordinate things. And then you can give them a direct, like, uh, a, a, a direct instruction. So over there, we got, uh, let's have six on that orange cone there and six down there. Six or seven, don't matter. Now, I didn't realize this many were going to turn up. I would have changed the format. So this is a great drill to do, and so is the other warm-up drill that I'm going to do later. If you've got big numbers, uh, Tuesday night, I work with FC Dutchman. So Mike Canelli, I don't know if you know him, he's the owner there. He gives me 60 kids, one coach, 60 kids. So I'm working, and they're, fortunately they're high school kids. But I've got 60 of them on my own. Now, some new coaches will struggle with 12. They're overwhelmed. This kind of stuff, what you do here is have three or four of these grids down. So I did this drill with them on Tuesday, and I put down three of these grids. And I'm just walking in and out. A couple of the coaches were helping us as well. So a lot of the stuff that I do is with huge numbers. But again, there's very little standing still. So here, um, what we're going to do here, we're going to go through the zigzag, over to the orange cone, in and out dribbling, back here. So here is the body of work that we're doing here. I've added this just to get more touches of the ball. So as all you're doing here, I'm trying not to touch the blue cone as we dribble through. Yeah, Here, pretty straightforward. We're going to dribble out to the yellow cone. We just dribble out to the yellow cone. Without the ball going past your big toe, just get the ball moving. Never let the ball go in front of your big toe. When we get here, little pullback, and then we're zigzagging. Yep, go. Next one goes when they get to the first gate. Get your head up. So in, in all of our curver practices, we will do about 15 minutes of this ball mastery. But I try and relate everything I'm doing to the, the skill that we're trying to get to at the end of the day. So I think the topic that we're going to coach here at the end of the day is fast break attack. Um, so after this, we're going to put in a little passing pattern drill that I'm hoping the girls can, um, can put together. All right, Mr. Hold. Yeah, finish off there. I'm going to run through this really quick because there's a lot of... And, and again, I'm just giving you some ideas. Be creative. You can add so much to this. There's a ton of stuff you can do here. So just some of the basic stuff that we're doing here. Again, if you're doing... Certainly if you're doing a, um, a change of direction uh, session, you know, where you're either doing a, doing a step on or you're doing the U-turn or whatever, here, just to warm the kids up, so they're going to be... Just ball walking forward, ball walking forward, doing drag backs going back. Over there now, you can only dribble your right foot. Again, that's a lot harder than it seems. Only dribble with one foot. So you've got to keep real tight control of the ball. What we do here, just to save time, just do one circuit, all right? Go. You're going to come out there. So you can only do right foot dribbling there. 
So they're backwards and forwards, every step. Right foot dribbling there, in and out. Good, 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 keep your head up. When you get to the orange cone, just hold it there. Only for the sake of time. Again, you'll be surprised. They will struggle with just dribbling with one foot. Certainly when you go to their weaker foot. Again, you can see these girls are very comfortable. They've done this a number of times in different formats. Good, good, good. Don't touch those cones. Don't touch the cones. Right, so here they're going to dribble left foot. And here they're just doing a little soul rolling. Pass the ball, miss. So here they're going to come out. That's all you're doing. Get them to work both feet. So you soul roll with your right, stop with your left. So you soul roll in and stop in. Again, working both feet. When you get here, just switch feet. Over there, left foot dribbling, go. So just a little soul roll. You know, again, if you're coming out of rec programs, rec kids will be able to do this. You know, get them to do it slowly. They may only get one or two touches in, but it's a break for it. It's a start. Left foot only. All right, here, we can begin to bring some moves into this little section here. Uh, I like to teach the outside foot cut a lot. You know, I think it's a really useful drill or useful skill, whether you are um, a defender or perhaps a midfielder or attacking. So what I'm teaching here is probably just a double spin-off. So again, it's easier when you've color coordinated it because yellow's right foot, blue's going to be left foot. So we're working both feet at the same time. Again, as all they're coming in is two cuts. So they're going to cut one, cut two, just spin off the player. My left foot is terrible, so I'm sorry about this. One, two, yeah. So all you're doing is coming in two quick touches. Great way to beat a player. You're just spinning off her and away. Here, you're doing two foot uh, dribbling. Cool, pass your ball. So all we're doing here, you must use both feet. So here you're going outside and inside and outside and inside and outside and inside. Go. You know, I go and watch some of their games, and I see the kids, the, the, the thing that we've done at Capital is where they bought into this, they do it in a game, which is great to see. You just hope they're doing it in the right areas, not in their six-yard box. Nice and sharp, good. Nice quick turn, bang, bang, away. Cut, cut, away. Good. This one we're going to do step over turns. So on the yellow cone is a left foot step over turn. Blue cone's a right foot. So that's all we're doing, get them to practice their change of direction. Step over and turn. So they step and they turn. Here you're doing soul rolls. You've got to take two touches though. You've got to take that setup touch. So you're just soul rolling through here, take a touch. Soul roll. So like you're beating a player, yeah? Go. Step and turn. Again, it, these are common moves that we're seeing the kids and the players use in a game. So continually practice them. Again, I focus a lot on their technique here. So I want them taking the ball away with the opposite foot so they don't um, tie their feet up. So the foot they step over with is not the foot they take the ball away with. Because the ball is already on your opposite foot. 
Good tackle that cone. Oh my lord. Good. Just some quick ideas you can do here. You know, if your topic of the day is moves to beat a player, you know, you, what we do here, we do two moves. So we do a U-turn, the hook turn, and a double scissors in the middle. So again, this is all under no pressure. If you look through the book there, Curver puts all the drills through free, set, free pressure sets. No pressure, limited pressure, and full pressure. At the end of the day, whether you're working with rec kids or college kids, they've got to be put through full pressure because that's how the game is played. But to teach anything, teach it with no pressure. Get the kids comfortable with it, especially the girls. Get them comfortable with it, get them confident with it, and you'll be surprised that they will do it in a game. So here's all we're doing. Yellow is right foot, blue is left foot. So we're going to do a right foot U-turn, hook turn. So we hook turn, we come in here, we get double scissors in. And in here, left foot U-turn, yeah? Again, go. Over there, you can just dribble free, free dribbling, whatever you want to do. So U-turn, little run, double scissors. The beauty of the gym floor is the ball moves. But again, they got to have control of the ball. They got to have quick feet. And there's a ton of coaching points, especially with the scissors. Scissors, great move. Most of the, you know, if you're watching a lot of soccer on TV, you'll see the top level pros do it. But all your kids do it. They love doing this move. One thing I'm seeing with this, though, when they do the scissors, they think they're doing the can-can. Some of the kids do the scissors like this. Yeah? Get them the link forward. Foot no higher than the ball. So all the time, you just got to give them little technical pointers. And again, we talk about where we do this kind of stuff. <laughs> As a defender, you don't want your defender doing this in your six-yard box. But let them be creative at midfield or let them be creative up top. So what if they lose the ball? They got a chance of getting back, yeah? Um, I don't know if anyone see a game last week. I forget who Chelsea were playing. Pedro got the ball on his six-yard box. And he did, a, he did a U turn, a hook turn. He did a double scissors. He did a slap step over and he passed the ball out to the left. It's fantastic. I wish I got it videoed. It's, it's everything that they just done there at the highest level. And again, I try and get the kids to watch as much soccer. I don't think the US kids watch as much soccer as the European kids do. I wish they would, whether it's they're watching the girls or they're watching the guys. Because all this that you are teaching is, is there at the highest level. So when, you know, they can see that, that what we're trying to put across to them, not only does it work, it's being done at the highest level. Um, we were very fortunate, n not myself, I didn't actually work with him, but some of the other top guys in, in Curva went out to Real Madrid and we worked with Ronaldo. And he, I didn't, I'd done this a couple of years ago. So after he was at Real Madrid, after he would do a practice, a three hour practice, he would put 200 of those cones down and then he would put balls on top of the cones. And he would do all this footwork on his own. And we were amazed that after working pretty tough three hours with your practice, just pick these cones up while I'm talking, just pick all the cones up. So after a three hour session, he'd have lunch and then he'd go out on his own and do all this stuff. And again, you know, you are talking about, you know, the top, top of the tree guy, but they all do this, you know. Use, use your ball mastery as your warm-up, um, and, and you'll be surprised. If you look there, if you've got a lot of kids, if you've got two teams, get two sections going. Every one of them's touched the ball. The heart's beating. This is a good warm-up. These girls would sometimes do this before a game. I get them warmed up like this, um, and, and uh, it works. Right, so... Oh, right, a couple of orange cones. We get a few more of it working here. Yeah, I get uh, six or seven over here. A couple more can get up. Let's get nine on that cone there. I think I'm doing the right one. So the next part, or one of the building blocks of Curver, is passing receiving, or receiving passing, whatever you want to call it. So, this can be monotonous. Passing drills can be very monotonous. And, you know, I've been there. I've been on that side of the coin. And you think, oh, no, passing. What are we going to do today? 
you've got to try and find a way to make it interesting for them and keep relating it to the game, yeah? With these girls, I talk a lot about triangles. I like them playing in triangles and not playing in straight lines. Most of the time, a straight line ball, when you play a ball straight, it rolls out of play. A lot of the time, especially at youth level, it will roll out of play. So we try and build up just doing triangles. Um, it, it, it's... Uh, it, it's tough as well because they tend to stay in straight lines. So if you can put together some passing patterns and see, talk to them during a game, and if you, this passing pattern you see here, sometimes when they're playing, they're scrimmaging, and they do the passing pattern, I stop the drill and just say to them, look, there's that drill. That's the reason why we did that. Okay? Again, talking about the upper levels of soccer, Passing patterns, they will spend as much as an hour a day doing this because what they are trying to get is they're trying to get the players into a situation where they do this subconsciously. And we all want that. We want our players doing stuff subconsciously. They don't have to think about it because they've done it time and time again. So get nine of you over there. A couple more. Don't all rush. One, two, three, over there, quick. Let's get a few more. You don't need a ball, don't need a ball, just get over there with them. We'll get one, two, three. Uh, one on the yellow cone, two on the blue cones. One on the yellow cone, two on the blue, go. One, don't need a ball. One on the yellow, another blue over there. Good. Again, this is a little bit tight, but again, I did this with... Uh, with the Dutchman on Tuesday night, with the, with the U17 boys, we had four of these grids going. So, again, ta do me a favor. Take those blue cones and push them back to the brown line. Just Right. So we build it up slowly, and then we can put them under a little bit of pressure. Now, again, we, we all coach different levels of kids. You know, you'll have kids maybe wreck or just beginning, and they're towing the ball like this, and, you know receiving it like this, or the favorite one is pass that ball in, Kendall. You know, they go, and, they go and control the ball, whoops, sorry, like that. We've all got it, we all see it. And it's down to you to kind of identify all these little errors and just give them little pointers. You know, just get them doing the basics, control the ball inside foot, pass inside foot, yeah? So again, you see kids a lot, pass it in, Kendall, where they're, controlled, they're trying to control the ball like this. So they've controlled it like that. But look at their body language, you know? gust of wind blows them over. You, you've always got to keep preaching the good word. It can be frustrating, very frustrating, but suddenly it clicks. It all comes together. And this is what us as coaches are trying to do that hope that one day it comes together. So here, let's get onto the drill. Pretty straightforward, but there's a lot of movement. So I pass the ball in there. You'll pass it back to me. I pass it to court. You do a one-two with Courtney, follow your pass, court down the line, yeah, take a touch there, play it in, and we're back where we started from, yeah? Again, I'll get on the kids, especially if, if you're working with a high-level team, there should be zero bad passing. We all work on good surfaces most of the time until we go outdoors, but indoors we're on good surfaces. There's no one tackling them. One of the biggest things you're going to come across is focus, Yeah? The focus of the kids can be minimal. But you've got to keep on it. Look, soccer's a game of focus. You've got to be on it all the time. You may not have the ball, but you've still got to be focused. So I'll get on their case a lot about this. So we'll start here. One of you up there. All set over there. Go. Play the ball in. Give it back. Play it wide. Little give and go with the middle person. Yeah. Next ball, go. We're going to get two balls going here. We only need two balls. A little bit of talking. Better passes. Come on. This work. I know it's tight in here. Come on. Don't give the ball away. Play it in. Don't close the space down. I know it's tough on the gym floor at times. Play it in. Give it back. Play it in. Yeah. So every one of these patterns, keep going girls, 
we would love to see this in a game, these kind of patterns. You know, giving, going, turning, little triangle. Again, you'll find a lot of your teams will talk for America when they're that side of the line. As soon as they get on the soccer field, it's like playing soccer in a monastery sometimes. They do not speak. They don't say a word. They don't talk. They don't call. Even the older kids. You know, I'm constantly on this group's case about talking more, calling for the ball, giving information, help each other out a little bit. It's a big part of the game. I would obviously make this a lot bigger so that they're really pinging the ball about a bit. All right. Good. So you got the idea of it. So now we're going to try and see if we can increase the intensity a little bit by having this bit one touch only. So again, and, and perhaps even that bit one touch only. The long pass have two touches. So if we could get this situation in a game where I'm playing Courtney, she plays me, I play you, you play her. Look, if we could just get that movement in a game, all one touch, look how you would play around players. Because what we're basically trying to, trying to get, get here is... Uh, Maris, just go and stand out there a minute. Pass that ball. So what we're, what we're trying to get here is me play a ball into Courtney. This is what it would look like in a game. So as I go in, just shut her down. So I play in there. Cool, give me the ball back. We're trying to get that situation where we're playing around players. Yeah? And there's many drills and exercises that you can do to get the kids doing that. And this is how we want them to play. We're in triangles, you know, and we're moving the ball through the, 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 the different areas of the field. Perhaps here we're starting off a D, going to the mid, mid going to the top of the forward line, and the forward line playing it forward, keeping possession. So what I want to see if we can do this. This part of the triangle, one touch only. That long part there, take two touches. So we can do it. Go. How much one touch can we put into this? All one touch, one touch. I'm a great believer in the more one touch we can do, the quicker we can move the ball from A to B, the better shape we're going to be in. Because yeah, if a ball go rolls away, just pick another one. The more we can get the other team disorganized. We don't want the other team getting in a nice two banks of four, shutting us down. We want them kind of running around like headless chickens. But the only way you can do that is accurate one-touch passing. Good. Get it to turn, yeah. Good. So in the triangle, as much one-touch as we can. Play a good ball in. Again, as, you, as you're going through this, depending on what level of players you've got, don't be afraid to stop it. Give individual kids some pointers. If they're not controlling the ball inside foot, they're not passing correctly, help them out. You know, it's, it's our job to educate the kids. It's our job to teach them. Whether they take that on board is up to them. But at least, if nothing else, we're feeling good about ourselves by giving good pointers, good indicators. And, and I, if we were doing some kind of scrimmage after this, I would, uh, and I see this happen in a game, I say, look, that's what we just did in the drill. And then they can relate to it. And they get to the situation where they realize you're not just drilling and exercising for the sake of it. There is an end product. All right, good. Hold it there. Good. All right, pick up the cones. Just go over there. Good. So now I'm going to bring this into what, what the topic is today, is fast break attack. Um, where's Taylor? I'll, I'll tell you what we do. Bring, bring those goals down here for us. We'll use, we'll use some goals. So I would normally do this with a goalkeeper, but we'll use the, the little goals for now. I said, take that one, Kara. Put that one over there. All right. 
So give me um, like seven in a yellow and seven in an orange. Put your pennies on. There's some big ones and little ones. Can have a couple more of you if you want to get up and do it. Have a few more of you. A couple more if you want to shoot. All right. Yellow's on the yellow with a ball. Everyone get a ball each. Orange is no ball on the orange. Let me put one with a logo on. Yellow's over there on the yellow cone. Now this <clears throat> does take a little bit of coach participation, but if you've got older teams, n normally I would let them be this, the point here. So what we're doing now is we're going to play the little triangle drill that we were doing there, getting them to pass in triangles, but at the end of the day, finish on goal, under pressure. So this is 100% of pressure. So Taylor, get up there. Now, <clears throat> when I say the magic word go, you know the deal, you're getting after Sid. If you get the ball, you can score. So here, and there'll be a lot of coaching points here that you can put across. Again, normally, I'd have a goalkeeper in goal. You have a couple of goalkeepers down there. You could even, if you've got big groups, have two of these sessions going at the same time. You can even do it with the little guys, the little rec players. They love this, you know, because it's, it's, it, they're running around, they're sprinting, they're going to finish on goal. So to start off with, we're going to try and get them to do accurate passing patterns. So Sid plays me, I play you, you play Taylor, Taylor to me, and go, get her. So now 1v1, finishing on goal. All right, so I play, next up, you play me, I play you, you play there, you play me, I play you, go. Oh, she jumped a bit early. First time, don't go till I say go. Go, you play me, I play you, you play there, you play me. Stay, go. Oh. She went way too... Don't go till I say go. You know the deal. No, when I say go, when you're on there. So you play me. Play there, play there. Stay and go. Get her, get her, get her, get her, get her. Quick, quick, quick. Hit the target. Come on. Play you, play me, play there, play you. Go. First time shot. Head down. Head down first time. Again, what a lot of the kids will do is take too many touches. So they've gone from... Um, Go, go out there, go out the minute. Yeah, you go out there. So they've gone from this situation. Go over there, stop it, Kira, stay here. Go over there. So they've gone from being advantage, take, don't shoot until I say shoot, get after her when I pass it. You take as many touches as you want. So they've gone from, look, one, two, now shoot. But look, bang, defenders got back. So too many touches of the ball, they're gonna lose that advantage. Sometimes they shoot from way out here, and this is a decision thing that they've got to make. So get there, get there. Now you get over there. There, stop there. So now they shoot, they panic. It's a hot potato, I don't want it. Panic, get rid of it. Well, she can take more touches. So she, you're making them make decisions. When to take more touches, and when not to take more touches. Now there, if I was her, I'd perhaps get after Akira, take two touches, quick. One, two, now shoot. So now, because she took her touches in the right area, she set herself up to give herself more chance to score, rather than shooting from out here, where you're cutting down the percentage of you scoring from this distance is, yeah, it's not bad, but it's not good. It can be better the nearer we are. But then we can't take too many, because we've got someone coming after us. Again, this is 100% of pressure. All right, let's see how, let's see how they go. We'll let them make their own decisions. Off you get. Good. Good. Play me. Play you. Play there. Play me. And ah, killing me. Go. Take her on. 1v1. What are you going to do? Again, if you get a 1v1 situation, go for it. Take her on. Play me. Play you. Hold it there. Go. First time shot. First time. <clears throat> One thing you'll find with the, when you tell them to hit first time, sometimes their feet are all over the place. You know, we, I think a lot of you do the ladder drills and that, which is great, fantastic. 
But you'll see it with strikers, their feet, and they have to adjust their feet, and you know, the ball's under their foot, and it's all over. There you can tell them, you know, you've got to have good footwork, your approach to the ball. Sometimes they're shooting, and they're back like this. Go, get out of there, play me, play you, play there, play me, and go. 1v1, 1v1. Let's see if we can get a 1v1, do some moves. Yep, play there, play there, play there, play there, go. 1v1, you've got to pull that back now. Take her on. Good, good, good. Try something, try something. That's dead. Go. Play me. Play you. Play there. Play me. Go. First time shot. Head down, crack it. Go. Again, if the kids are hitting it over the bar, tell them why. They're leaning back, hitting underneath the ball. Go. First time shot. Good strike. Go. Play me. Play you. Play there. Play me. Go. First time shot. Hit it. Cross the keeper. Hit the target. Come on. Play me. Play you. Play there. Go. Oh, look at that big touch. I'm going to make it now where the defender's really getting on top of you. Go. Play me. Play you. Play there. Play me. Go. What are you going to do, Sid? Put it in. Again, most of the time you want the kids hitting the corners if you can. Most of the time, keepers are going to be in the middle of the goal. So encourage the kids, get their head up just before they shoot. You've got about a second to make a decision. Hit the corners. Last time through, play me, play you, play there, play me. Go, get her. Go. Let's really get after each other now. Put each other under pressure. Go. First time shot when you get there. First time. Good. Go. Go. First time shot. Hit it. Come on, we got to strike that ball. Don't tickle it. Go. Hit it. Hit it. Nice shot. Really put your foot through the ball. Remember, in a big game, you got a goalkeeper. Last time. Go. So we can finish on a good one. Go. What are you going to do? Take her on, then. Take her on. Take her on. Go, finish, lefty. All right, switch lines. Again, the good thing about this kind of a shooting drill, there's a lot going on. We've got a little passing section here where perhaps we're collectively, we're a midfield trying to break through to the forward line. We've added a defender for pressure and we're still trying to finish on goal. Go, play me, play you, play there, play there. Stay Sid, go Sid, go. First time, head down. Let's really drive through that ball. There, play there, play there. Go. First time shot, Mo. Hit it. Go. Go. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to say go. Go. Go, get her. 1v1, 1v1. What are you going to do? Show me something. Excellent, good. So you see there, Taylor did the little soul roll. She didn't even realise she did it. Beat the player. Did a soul roll, beat the player, put the ball in the back of the net. So again, highlight good stuff that they do collectively to everyone. Oh, that was just something we just did in the warm-up. Did you realise that? A lot of the time, they won't realise that they did it. Sometimes you have to show them on a video. Look, you just did that. Oh, I didn't realise I did that. Go. Go. First time shot, head down. Come on, it's hit the target. Got no goalkeeper, we should be scoring every time. Go. First time, hit it, Kendall. I'm going to close it up, make it difficult. Go, 1v1. Good touch, good first touch. Again there, we want the kids to get the ball out from under their body. Go. It's a easier on a gym floor. It sticks on the turf. Go, Sid. What are you going to do? Perhaps a little cut, cut back, come out this side. And again, I would switch this over as well, go that side. So they're using their left more. Go. Go. Hit it, hit it. All right, take her on then. Take her on, what are you going to do? Come on, beat her. Go. Ah. Go. Take a touch now, 1v1, 1v1, come back, come back with it. Again, if we're going out wide, 
Yeah? We've got, we got to, you know, the angle's so, so acute, so sharp, you're not going to score. So you've got to cut the ball back and take the player on. Yeah? As a defender, I'd be quite happy for you to be going that way. Yeah? Over to the toll booths. Over to I-87. Keep going. I'd be very happy for you to go there because you're going away from the goal. So as a defender, we can talk about this as defenders in this drill. You know, you've got to get after them and try and push them that way or push them that way. Get them away from the goal. As attackers, we've got to come back into the middle with little cuts and stops and starts. Go. Here we go. So we can get this flying. Go. First time shot, hit it. Oh, look at that touch. So, so go wide. Good goal. Go. Cut. Can we see someone do a cut in full, a full speed cut, a full speed change of direction? So we can put someone on their backside. Ready? Go. Now what are you going to do? Cut. Good, good. There's a little double spin off. Excellent. Good girl. So she's done the double spin off that we worked there and she's come into the middle. Good. Giving herself more of an opportunity to score. Go. Hit it, Kendall. Good. Go. Go. Good touch. One more. So we finish on a good one. Go. Take a touch. Cut. Oh, there was a little drag back. Begging for a little drag back there. Go. Don't be afraid to try your change of direction moves. Go. Cut. There you go. Good girl. Finish. Excellent. Unlucky. Other than the finish, you can see there our effective, just a basic step on is. You know, I tell the kids, if you're in a foot race, put the brakes on. That girl will keep running. Put the brakes on. There's the space for you. Then bang. See what's on. Go. Finish on a goal. Take a touch. Head down. Hit it. Oh, who's going to score the winning goal? Let's go, Taylor. Show me something. Go. Hit it. Hit it. Go. Ah! Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. I'll find you. Go. Hit it. Oh, let's finish on a good one. 1v1. One one. Finish lefty. Look at that. Perfect. Good coaching point there. You two come out here quickly. Great coaching point there that I didn't see too many of them do. Come here, you two. So what this player has done, get, get on this side. No, you stay there. You get, you get behind her. So she's come across her. So she's gone across her there. Now we're in this situation. This is a great situation to be in if you're a striker. What can this girl do, this player do? She can bring her down. She can kick her. The ch and there you got, you're in the penalty box, red card, penalty, blah, 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 all the rest of the stuff goes on. So she's taken her out of play just by a position of where she's in. So she's come here, she's cut across, taken the player out of play, and she's on goal there. You can add to this, you can have a trailing defender coming down here so that you've got a 2v1 situation. So you'll have two oranges against one yellow. Uh, and you can make stuff up like this. You know, the kids like this. This is a fast energy, um, intense drill, a lot going on, and they love to shoot on goal. Again, you've got a goalkeeper in, 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 in the situation here as well. All their touches are coming into play. Here, if your team is, you know, of such a quality, you can have a player here that can work this. And again, I always say this is like a busy midfield where we're ping, 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 and then we set the forward free. Um, and, and then the hardest thing in the game is putting the ball in the back of the net. Can they do it under pressure? Yep. Good work. So just stand up here, out here. Just line up. Any, any questions, anything? I know we rush through stuff here when we do these because there's a lot going on. Again, that's a typical one-hour session that I would do. I'd spend a little bit more time on the ball mastery. I'd make the pass and receiving a bit bigger. Um, sometimes, I, I very rarely will I finish with a, a scrimmage with these, with with capital, or most teams, I, I very rarely do, you know, 11 v 11. The kids are always asking for it. Oh, can we do full field? Full well, problem is with full field, number one, it's not a good use of our resources. But again, half the kids don't touch the ball. If you're playing full field scrimmages in your practices, you've got to remember you're only catering for the strongest kids because your weaker kids are not touching the ball. 
So break everything down into small-sided games. You know, the curve of philosophy is small-sided games. We've probably got a hundred of them in our, in our curriculum, and I know I've done some over the years. And they love small-sided games. You know, if you go to Afram's, he supplies you with the little goals. Split them up. Play three-on-three, two-v-ones, three-v-twos. I very rarely go four-v-four. Four. That's about as high as I will go. Because then your teams are only as good as your weaker players. You can have the two or three best players in the capital district, but that's only two kids. You, what we're trying to do as coaches is build up from the bottom, but never forgetting the top kids. We've got to challenge them, but we've got to bring these up. If we can bring our bottom kids up, you know, we're in good shape. And that's what I believe the, the Curva curriculum does because, again, they're all working individually. They're all working with one ball, one player. Um, we will, I will push these real hard, you know, not as hard, not harder than I pushed them here. They would get, because they need to be challenged. Again, challenge your top kids. You can challenge them with speed. You know, some of these kids, they think they know it all. They think they've done it and they're, they're, the, they're the business. Well, get them to do it quickly. Get them to do it more accurately. Get them to do it with their weaker foot. Really challenge your top kids. But again, encourage the, the younger ones or the, your so-called weaker players. Encourage them as well. Because that's, they're the ones that get disheartened. They're the ones that leave the game. Because um, they feel they're not getting, they're not progressing. And as I say, it's a frustrating game if we can't control the ball. If you've got any questions, I'll take them. Um, I'm doing another session after this. But uh, round of applause for some of these girls. <laughs> little bow. We can have a little bow. <laughs> All right, get a drink. Get yourself a drink. <laughs>